This is Spencer with the MacGuffin. And I'm Alan. And we have just come out of A Good Day to Die Hard. Yes. Uh, the fifth chapter of the Die Hard opus. John McClane cannot catch a break. Especially now. Like, this this, <laughs> this felt like clerks meet Die Hard. Because not, not, not only is it, like, John McClane being Die Hard, this time he's traveling around with his son, yeah. Ty Courtney, Die yeah. Harding. He's just like, I'm on vacation the entire time. I just know. Keeps I'm on around. vacation, but I'm still going to jump into this action. I mean, it definitely it definitely feels like it picked up where uh, Live Free or Die Hard sure. left off with the family, the dysfunctional family trying to reunite. Uh, yeah. Very much uh, chase oriented, like uh, the Live whole Free movie or Die felt Hard. like a chase. Oh yeah, no, yeah. definitely. And I mean, I was sitting there thinking about this actually during the movie that you know, granted, all of them sort of take place over a very truncated time frame, right? But this one very much felt more chase-ish than even a good, or uh, sorry, Live Free or Die Hard. Live Free or Die Hard. There were like moments of building up to it, and then there was like a lot of chase. Well, the, the interesting thing about this movie is that it's only ninety minutes, about an yeah, hour and a half, brief. which is like what is twenty thirty minutes shorter than the. Long, the next shortest, shortest yeah, movie. probably, and I totally felt that the pacing was just on, on, on like that, and it just didn't have enough space to breathe. Well, I, I, I think the reason why it was so truncated is because the story was very much abbreviated. I yeah. mean, they really sort of streamlined what the the baseline story was, and that's essentially, you know, John McClane goes to Russia to save his son, and then they go on, uh, a, they're being chased by people who are trying to kill them, essentially. Right. And this Russian dude is with them. The sad thing about this one is that the writing, see, to me, John McClane is always the go-getter. He's the one who's always, like, you know, saving the day or whatever. In this movie, it felt like he was just tagging along with his son. Oh, no, totally. Just Absolutely. like, what's going on? I guess I'll just follow you and no, no. see what this, happens. This very much felt like he was not the lead. Like, yeah. it really ring, rung bells of uh, Indiana Jones and the Crystal Skull for me, where it really mm -hmm. felt like it was trying to almost be a transitional film. Sure. Like, even by the end, it really felt like they're setting up Jai Courtney sort of as, like, the new John McClane. I mean, they were making jokes like, I'm John McClane. He's like, well, you're a junior, junior and I'm senior. senior yeah. Like, so it felt like... It felt sort of like that, you know. This has been a thing in action movies lately, you know. Indiana Jones, The Crystal Skull. They sort of hinted at that with Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol. They always like, team the main character with someone else who could or may not become the heir apparent. Well, it, yeah, it really, it really feels like, especially as these action stars are getting older, you know, Tom Cruise, Harrison Ford, now Bruce Willis, like they're trying to find a way to continue on the franchise in case the lead actor doesn't want to do it. And it yeah. felt, it felt yeah. really. The sort problem. Of the problem with that is that a lot of these, you know, great action stars were successful because they were kind of the lone wolf, like the one oh, man totally. versus everyone. So it feels weird to see like John McClane teaming up with someone else to like, you know, take down all these bad guys. Well, that was sort of my biggest fundamental problem with the movie is that, you know, Die Hard as a franchise, even including Live Free or Die Hard, is sort of fundamentally felt like as a cat and mouse game with John McClane and the villain. And this doesn't right. feel that way at all. No. This is just a chase movie. Yeah, it just feels like and just one whole chase scene, really. Yeah. It was actually kind of funny because the writing didn't allow the characters to really expand or develop. There'd be like a 10 to 15 minute action scene, and then there's like a two or three minute scene where John oh, McClane's yeah. just talking to some random stranger, like, man, it's hard being a parent. They just, they literally like the two minute breather before <laughs> yeah. they have to start running. Exactly. Again. Like, it, 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 it almost just felt like they just were like, oh shit, we need to add this, and they just threw it in in the writing. Yeah, it wasn't like done in real time, but it almost had a feeling of being done in real time because it was yeah. so quickly through all the action. And, you know, the other thing was Jai Courtney. He's not like he's not bad, but he was just not good. Like you think about all the other sort of accessory characters, Reginald Bell Johnson, who I loved, mm -hmm. Samuel Jackson, who I enjoyed, and even Justin Long. Like they all felt like they had more to their characters than he did. He felt very one-dimensional, just like I don't, I don't like you, Dad. You yeah. weren't a good father. And I mean, I think he was. I think he's okay. I mean, in Jack Reacher, he was. He was all right. I think it was just more of a product of poor writing that didn't oh, yeah. really give his character enough to be memorable. Well, the problem with that family is they had done that story arc in Live Free or Die Hard with the daughter. Like, yeah. so to rehash the, like, you're a fucking bad father. Like, it just felt like, okay, like, I get it. You're, but you're carrying on in his footsteps. You're yeah. more in common than you really believe. <laughs> like, it's that classic cliche. So. Yeah, I mean, the, the movie, I was walking in trying to be cautiously optimistic. But Me too. But halfway in, I was like, oh. This is exactly what I suspected. Oh no! It to the, be. The, the last third of the movie is a dramatic drop off. Like the yeah. first, the first two thirds, 
is fine. It's not great. It's, yeah, but it's it's like an it's okay right. action film. It's yeah. one of those action films I could throw on and watch in the background or something. Okay. Not mine. The last third of the movie though is, is just like slow and frustrating and doesn't really. The make twist much. just didn't make any sense. There was backstabbing and there was backstabbing behind the backstabbing. Yeah. There, there's one good moment in the last third, but that isn't necessarily enough to redeem it. Oh, yeah, I think I know what you're talking about. Oh, yeah. There's you, the you one know. scene where everyone's like, oh, yeah, shit. And every, everyone, everyone enjoyed it. It's probably the one scene in the entire movie that everyone enjoyed. Yeah, but it's not enough yeah, to, to save them. And there's so much CGI at the end. Like, the CGI oh, became yeah, so when, aggressive. I said, like, it totally went like a Zack Snyder route with the slow-mo and the CGI everywhere. Yeah. It's just... Oh, what the heck, you know? It became a cartoon, pretty much, it did. in the end. I agree. So. All right, uh, final grade. Final grade. Uh, you know, thinking about it, I'm going somewhere in the C range. Yeah, I'm feeling I'm feeling probably C+. Plus. Like, I, yeah. the first two-thirds, I probably I was thinking, you know, maybe low B, B, maybe. Yeah. But that last third really dropped it down to C plus C. Or it's tough when, you know, you have the name Die Hard on the movie. I mean, you have so much to live up yeah. to, and this film just didn't live up to it. No, so. sadly. Um, well, that being said, check out more reviews at McGuffinPodcast.com, and we'll see you later.